Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Junkyard Digs. Today we're picking up right where we left off after this truck, but now with this truck. Let's dig into it. So if you missed this video, I suggest going and checking it out because these two are a package deal. These are both international load stars. That one is a 1600 CO cab over. And this one is an International Low Star 1700. Now these have both been sitting on a farm for a very long time and I was intending to go get them running at the location they were at. But my buddy Jed, whose house we're at right now, he beat me to them so we've had to relocate here, but we're still gonna get them running. Right away while we're on the topic, thank you to Jed for letting us work on these. If you guys need any diesel work done on your own vehicles in the Midwest, Central Iowa Diesel Performance is the place to go. All right, let's dig into this and see what we're working with. So, I think this one is actually older than that one. I could be totally wrong. It is also obnoxiously solid. Very good metal on this truck. Cool looking truck. Uh, we've got a key. A whole bunch of those numbers on the dash again. Some more switches and things. Looks like a two-speed rear end. Oh, an aftermarket water gauge. That's good to see. Someone took care for it. Knowing where it came from, this is actually probably a very well cared for vehicle. Let's take a look right away. Okay, no clutch again, and no brakes, and the, the pedal moves. Okay, well, I've seen this movie before. Ah, 1964. So they're actually both the same year. They're just a uh, cab over and not cab over. Let's go ahead and pop the hood on this thing and see what we're dealing with. So. Same story as last time. We have ourselves a two barrel Holly on an international V8. This time our master cylinders are up here instead of under the footwell. I imagine they're both junk, but we'll uh, we'll get to that. That looks awfully familiar. That looks like a, shit, a GM part. Let's go ahead and get a battery in this and pop that air cleaner off and go ahead and start moving forward and get it running. To help us get all this stuff done today, we have our decked toolbox truck system carrying all of our tools and parts and fluids and everything we need to include our tang tools portable toolkit check these guys out deck.com tangtoolsusa.com okay all right now we're getting into the differences between these two videos the other one had a remanufactured holly this one does not. List number 2582-1. That's a way different list number, but it looks to be the same carburetor with the mixture screws being on the back. A divorced idle circuit. Ah uh, yes, the Holly 2582. This is a 64 to 70 international. Carburation.com's got some pretty good stuff if you need things like knowledge. All right, we've got oil, we've got electricity. Let's see if we have rotation. <laughs> All right, so for those of you at home doing this on your own, you're probably wondering where the hell do I start when I'm trying to get one of these running. Right now we have an engine that spins over. That's the hardest part to any revival. Uh, beyond that, it's just little bits and pieces that you gotta replace. If an engine doesn't spin over, you gotta start at square one, which is replace engine or make it spin over. I just threw some fuel down the throat. We're gonna go hit the key and see if anything happens. I'm anticipating, since this is sat for 20 years, nothing happens. But, right now we know we have fuel. So if nothing happens, that means we're missing either compression or spark. Well, the way the engine's spinning over, sounds like it's got great compression compared to the last one. So, let's go hit the key. If anything happens, everything's happy. If nothing happens, we're missing spark. There's three things you need. Rotation, aka compression and air. Spark, and fuel. If you can supply two, and you're missing the the third one, that one's your problem. So now, just like that, we know which direction to go with this engine. We're missing spark, so we need to find it. I'm going to pop this cap and rotor off and uh, clean everything up, and that should be just about it. This thing should be making noise. So right away, I'm noticing some interesting stuff different between this truck and the last truck. This is a GM ignition cap, and rotor for that matter, whereas the other one looked more like a Ford. 
go ahead and get our rotor off. Beep, beep, boop, boop. The more I think about that, the more interesting that gets because uh, these are the same motor. They should be. They're both, you know, 1964s. At least the trucks are. That's a four barrel intake on this one. Someone made a homemade two barrel adapter for some reason. Probably fuel economy. Everything's moving underneath nice and free, so that's good. Let's get some sandpaper in there and clean those up as is tradition. As much as my back still hurts from lifting the cab on that cab over, I am missing the accessibility right now. You can get to that engine really nice. Alright, got our sandpaper in there. Now I don't have a date from when these trucks were last parked. Actually I might, let me look at that paper again. I don't know about the red one, but this one I was able to find registration that says 2011. So, it's only been sitting for 10 years. That should be about all we need to make this thing fire off. Points are clean. Let's go ahead and pop this guy off. We'll find somewhere where we can put him and spray him with a little bit of flammable liquid and watch for fire. All right, go ahead. Okay. Perfect. Thanks for your help. And then I'll come back out and okay. keep helping you. <laughs> well, still no spark. I don't know why. I've cleaned our points pretty good at this point. Jeez, this thing is old. It's a 1964. Holy crap. So if you can't test for power of the multimeter, uh, another quick way, you can always just grab a screwdriver. I'm just kind of ground some stuff out here and see if you get any sparks with the key on. There we go. Yep, we got power. Oh, our points seem to be working. Why am I not getting anything out of the coil? There we go. Now we're working. You want me to start it? Not yet. I'm trying to practice how to do my hair. Are you? Yep. I've been trying to get it right, but not all the time. I'm still really bad at mine. Well, because you're almost bald. <laughs> Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> it's fair. Why would you want to put your hair on a ponytail? You don't think I look good with a ponytail? No. <laughs> you would look like a girl and everybody would call you a girl. <laughs> that would not be funny. Alright, played with our points gap. Let's see if we get spark. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> okay. After all that, we have spark. Will it last? Eh, probably not. It's being pretty finicky. But uh, let's put everything back together and see what happens. Hey, Wayne. Yep. Alright. Yep, she lost spark again. Man, this one's being finicky. Okay, so just like that, it's been like a week or two. Last time I was here, I was having some issues with getting this thing to hold a constant spark, and it was getting dark already, so I decided to call it a night and head home. Bunch of stuff got in the way, it's been two weeks, whatever, we're back to make this thing run finally. So like I just mentioned, when we last left off, we were having some ignition issues where I could not get this thing to keep spark. I uh, cleaned the points once again with some sandpaper, got it to hold spark for a little bit at least, center point gap and got it to make spark again so we're we're just gonna try this again just throw a little fuel at it and see what happens all right let's see if anything happens today got our fuel line disconnected so in case it starts uh, spraying fuel out it's not going to put a bunch of crap into the carb I imagine the tanks empty but I have no idea here we go <laughs> you pop once. Uh, don't tell me you lost spark again. God, this thing is annoying. Alright, we're now going to crank this and see if we have spark to the plug.
We do. However, it is very intermittent and very, very weak. So it looks like we need to diagnose a poor spark. If I had a guess, that's going to be the uh, dwell for the or the points gap is not set correctly. So I'm gonna go redo that and see if we can change that to be a stronger spark. I'm gonna go ahead and fill the gas tank quick so that while I'm cranking on this to get better spark, we're simultaneously priming our fuel system. You know, two birds, one stone. As some of you may have noticed, the red cab over from the last video is no longer sitting beside this truck. That's because it sold. Someone showed up with two grand and away she went. But worry not, you still have a chance to own one of these. I just talked to Jed and he said he wants a thousand bucks for this truck. So if any of you would like to buy this truck, hit up cyclonerepair at gmail.com. All right, back to working on Spark. Well, adjusting our points didn't change much. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and pop open our cap and rotor and take a better look. Our pins up top are kind of crusty, but not terrible. One thing I am noticing is that there's a ballast resistor on the uh, firewall over here. And someone has gone ahead and bypassed it and just ran 12 volts to the coil. So there's a chance that they were already having issues back when this was running with this truck having a weak spark. So instead of hitting it with 9 volts, they hit it with 12. I'll get this cleaned up and we'll see. Alrighty, so after a bit of playing, we've cleaned our cap and rotor and seen no better spark. I mean, I mean very, very, very lightly better spark but not enough to make this thing run. So I've begun to suspect our power source and I've wired a wire from the positive side of the coil to the positive post in the battery. As you can see, it's closing our voltage regulator contacts internally. So that should all be working. That's good to know. Uh, get this hooked up and then we'll see if we got spark. All right, here we go. Same test. We have ourselves a nice yellow spark now. The truck even tried to run off of what was in the intake. So let's go ahead and get that hooked back up, get some fuel in it, and see if this thing takes off. All right, that should be plenty. Let's see what happens. Come on, you old girl, come to life. Hell yes. Finally, that's what I want to see. And as a bonus, we got fuel coming out. So the fuel pump and everything's working. Oh man, this thing fought me and fought me, but we're finally making it somewhere. All right, come on, old girl, fill those bowls. The accelerator pump works. kind of idle god damn so we got a fuel leak right here I need to take care of but there finally this thing fired up I'm gonna get a new piece of fuel hose from that filter into the car but we'll be right back that is not at all where I thought the fuel leak was I thought it was that hose but it looks to be the front of our carburetor bowl is leaking probably if I had a guess the accelerator pump and we talked about that in the last video that this is what exactly what happens so this is a perfect example of that I guess at this point I need to go get us a carb kit that is ready to come off, as you can tell. That right there, if you've noticed, is a homemade four barrel to two barrel adapter. This truck, unlike the other one, has a four barrel intake. At some point, someone came along and said, enough of that four barrel nonsense, let's convert this over to a two barrel. And that's exactly what we have here, which is very interesting to say the least. And that right there is the perfect example of a broken accelerator pump diaphragm leaking fuel out, just like I mentioned in the revival of the other dump truck. All right, let's get this torn apart, get those new parts in it, and get ready to put it back on. Starting off, we have a huge mud dabber nest on the back of the car. Look at that. Perfectly, perfectly formed to the carburetor. 
That's cool. And now it's gone. This thing seemed to run pretty good, so we're not going to go all the way down to the power valve, which we absolutely should be. But I am short on time today, because i got to get this video out tomorrow. But uh, we're just going to pop that accelerator pump off the bottom and get a new one in there and move on with seeing if we can get this thing to have brakes or clutch or any of that and try to at least drive one of these dump trucks. Alrighty. There we go. We have ourselves a new accelerator pump. Here's the old accelerator pump diaphragm. And it is junk. You can see it's kind of torn right here. And that was what was letting fuel run out the bottom of the carb through this hole right here. So get this sucker back on there and see how well she runs. Oh, bit of a cracked line here. Now it's always important when you're putting your carburetor back on, inspect everything as it's going on. As you can tell, we have a severely cracked line right here for the uh, ported vacuum. So we're going to snip him off and get him resituated further down the line so that that's not a vacuum leak. But it's just a good idea to keep an eye out on everything you're doing so that you can identify any issues that you may not have seen with the carburetor on or off in the first place. All right, let's see how she does now. It's gonna take a second to fill the bowls. That runs pretty damn good. Our accelerator pump is empty, so I'm anticipating it to stall here when I go rev it, but we'll try it. Man, you can't complain about that at all. This thing runs great. Even idles down well. Hell yeah. We got an oil pressure gauge. We do indeed. We are at uh, run. That's good. Looks like we're charging the battery up. I finally figured out what these are. These are the oil changes oil and filter it was last done at 1116 so you know 500 miles ago hell yeah Let's get you guys an exhaust clip so you can hear it from behind saw this button right here. I know exactly what that is. Please work. Oh yes. About damn time we got something with a working horn. Wonder if any of our PTOs work. At this point, I guess we see if we can bleed the clutch or the brakes, because I really doubt either of them work, but eh, why not give it a shot, you know? Well, figured out where all the coolant went. Turns out 
This thing's gonna need a radiator. That's not something I'm going to touch at all, but for any of you prospective buyers out there, know that it needs a radiator. Mmm, bone dry. I'm assuming that this is no good, but we'll give it a go anyway, see what happens. Thankfully the clutch is not stuck engaged unlike the last truck. So even if we don't get a working clutch or anything, I should still be able to drive this. All right, let's see if we can at least gravity bleed these down to their respective uh, slave cylinders so that, you know, I can maybe have brakes or a clutch. All right, so here's what we've got. Any attempt to, uh, you know, bleed these would be pretty much useless, as I've discovered when I was underneath that uh, there's a line for the clutch that's completely blown out and just missing. So it's already dumped all the fluid on the ground. And the brakes are the like, you know, giant boosted brakes of doom and sadness that I would need two people to bleed. And I'm sure from the way this feels, this isn't really doing anything anyway. But more importantly, we got one of them, which means we got brakes as long as that handle moves. So not gonna have any form of a clutch, but we have a handbrake. And if you ask me, that's good enough to try to drive this thing around. So let's get it fired up, go that way in the yard, and then do a loop around that building. All right, I'm gonna hop in this and figure out which gear is which, and then we're gonna fire this up and go for the first drive in 10 years. So let's do it. Forward gear. Forward gear. Ah. Ah. supposed to or not but holy hell it sure does oh we gonna make it <laughs> all right avoid the trees Just idling. What a champ. Hell yeah. We got one of the two dump trucks to drive. That's a win. All right, so there you have it. That is the revival of our second 1964 International Lodestar. I don't know if this is a 1700 or an 1800. It has both badges, but regardless, this thing had it ran in 10 years, and now it does. Thanks to Current for sponsoring this episode, and I hope you guys learned something throughout this episode. If you did or enjoyed what you saw, make sure you subscribe to the channel to help support us doing dumb stuff like this for free here on YouTube. There's another dump truck over there. 
No, you know what? I've had enough of these for a bit. For episodes between episodes, check out all of our friends here on YouTube. Make sure to subscribe to them and support all of their work as well. We'll see you guys right here next week. Peace. All right, now I gotta figure out how to get this back over there.